here at Automate 2019 in Chicago, collaborative robotics, well, it's everywhere. It's, it's much talked about, and it looks like the wave of the future, but what do we really mean by collaboration in human-robot interaction? I'm with Simon Witten, he's Senior Vice President of Sales North America for KUKA. Simon, uh, everyone talks about cobots, collaborative robots, but what do we truly mean about robot-human interaction? It's a very good question. As you rightly say, as I look around, I see cobots and collaborative robotics everywhere. I think the key thing to say at the beginning is the emphasis has become too much on the, the robot and less on the application when in fact it's the reverse that's true. What we at KUKA understand is that the most important thing is to execute the customer's application in the most efficient way. If that involves collaboration, then perfect, we've got products for that. But as you know, or as the people watching this video may know, there are several stages of collaboration. We say there are six stages of collaboration these days. If I can run through them very quickly, it'll indicate how the application is key to the type of collaboration the customer wants. If you think about the classic industrial robot application, where you've got the robot and the equipment surrounded by a fence, this is what we call stage one of collaboration, but it's also the safest. There's no interaction between human and equipment. Then you may have the need to interact occasionally with the robot open a door or reload parts. We call this stage two and often you have a standard industrial robot with some kind of vision detection or some kind of sensor that tells you the people are present. The robot stops at that point while you interact, do what you have to do, you leave, it carries on. The benefit is the system can run at full speed while that's happening. Stage three, you've got constant interaction, but the robot doesn't require the human being to do their work for it to work. So for example, I'm loading parts which the robot subsequently works on. We call this stage three. Again, the robot can run at full speed. Now we move to what people think of as cobots, where there's a need for people and robots to be close together. Stage four, you've got people nearby the robot, but they're doing separate tasks. So it's simply the space sharing application which is important. And in this circumstance, the robot comes to a stop if it encounters contact with somebody. By definition, of course, it has to move slowly to safeguard the human being. But I repeat, the two operations can run independently. Stage five is true collaboration, where the robot and the human operate together on the same thing. Think of a polishing or grinding application where the robot turns a heavy part and the human being is grinding or polishing the surface. And then this fast emerging stage six is where you mount a robot on a mobile platform. And essentially now you can have collaboration wherever you want it. So the robot can go to a different place, perform its function, then travel somewhere else. And these are the six stages. And as you'll see, what dictates the type of robot is the type of application you have and the stage of collaboration you're at. Uh, Simon, is the lowest cost solution always the most collaborative solution? That's a good question. Let me just think about that. Maybe not because often to accommodate the passage of people through a cell, you need to take up space, you need to put additional sensing equipment in, and it may be that the easiest thing to do in that circumstance is simply to put a physical barrier around it, because the application itself may not be safe. For example, there's very little call for robotic laser cutting in a collaborative form or welding in a collaborative form. So the application will largely dictate the cost, but it's not always true to say that the lowest cost is the most collaborative. When thinking about collaborative robotics, think of six stages, says Simon Witten of KUKA.